Hi, hi everyone. Welcome. So, good morning. Uh, good morning. We are the first talk. Uh, we hope you are awake. Um, thank you, Attila, for the introduction. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, and thank you also for the rest of the team in Besides Budapest. It's great to be here for us. We have been willing to come for some time. Uh, so thank you for all the effort and the organization here. It's super good. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, okay, so we are here to present uh, our talk about uh, sp detecting and locating spying microphones. It's called Spy vs. Spy, a modern study of MIG bugs operation and detection. I'm Veronica Valeros. I'm from Argentina. Um, I'm part of the Mates Lab Hacker Space, and in my this is not my daily job. I do malware analysis, so this is outside my comfort zone, but it was fun. So here we are. So I'm Sebastian Garcia, also from the Mates Lab Hack Space in Argentina, and also researching in machine learning, computer network security, malware, botnets, and all these things. Um, and this for us has been kind of a sidetrack. This is, like Veronica said, not our main uh, thing, but we love to go in there. So, so okay. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. So if you go to this address in here, bit.ly slash spybad, you will see these slides in your screen live while we are moving them. So you can copy, click, and all everything in there directly. Yeah, right? and even if some images are small, you can still see them. You can there. see them. Okay. Click the malicious links, everything. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that. Um, so or how, how did our research started, right? Um, it was 2015 when uh, we were, I was reading Twitter and then I found that Ai Weiwei, which is a Chinese and dissident artist, uh, an activist from China, um, he reported that he found different uh, microphone bags in his studio and home. So he was posting images in Instagram saying, oh, look what I found, surprise. And then he, he started investigating on this and apparently these microphones were planted in his home and studio like four years earlier, right? So that was a lot of time. It, it, took, it took four years for him to realize that. And for us, he was like, really? It's like this old technology should not be used anymore. I mean, it's like James Bond movies, right? From many, many years ago, not the fresh ones. So it was like, how it is possible that that this is still used? Like, how how can we tell that we are not, that we don't have something like that in our home, right? Uh, it was not an easy question to answer. And we found that we, we didn't, we start looking and there was nothing, right? Nothing to normal people to detect things like this. And it was uh, our first motivator to get into topic and say, okay, let's move this, this uh, let's open this uh, investigation knowledge uh, to the world that for, for us it was not there, right? So super quick, but anyone in the room actually is working with microphones and searching for microphones, these companies, they are well known, right? Nobody here? No? There are companies that are usually doing this as a business. Looking for Microsoft now? Put in Microsoft? Okay. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So we, we started investigating and uh, we wanted to first, of course, as any other research, uh, we wanted to get an idea of what was there in the past, like, you know, state of the art. Yeah. Be because the problem is that nobody knows how this really works, right? Yeah, microphones there, Bernica said, like, and the knowledge we have is coming from movies, right? So it's like, we don't know what, what it's possible. We don't know the ranges. We don't know the facility. We don't know if it's easy. We don't know the technology. And that's when this is started. Yeah, right? and when you, all your knowledge about something, it comes from movies and TV series, you know, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> so um, we wanted to take a look a bit more deeply. And then we, we start uh, finding some very nice microphones through history that were really interesting. So one of them was the what's called the thing, mm -hmm. um, and it was detected. It was discovered uh, in an American embassy in Moscow, in Russia, and the what you see there uh, is a seal, like a decoration seal of America, and it was a gift to the embassy. So they put it on the wall, and they forgot about it. Right? Ten years later. A uh, radio aficionate was listening to the frequencies and suddenly 
he said, well, what are these conversations? Where is this coming from? And then they found this. So, you, you, you know, Lara, any technology that we ever invented was used for spying. <coughs> this is not new, this has, has been happening for a long time. So, when they opened the seal or the thing, they didn't find any battery inside. So, does anyone here have any idea how this microphone was working for 10 years without a battery? Any battery? Resonance, ah, yeah, yeah, it's going there, right? So they were actually inducting electricity through electromagnetic waves sent by other parties outside the embassy, right? So they call this like painting with the electromagnetic frequency, the embassy, and they were sending, powering remotely, like an NFC, right? Like RFID, a little bit larger. Yeah. Uh, so you can imagine the people in the middle, right? It was super, yeah. super dangerous. Which, which for, yeah. the, for the time, which was after Second World War, it, it was very creative because if you were sweeping your, your place detecting microphones, this has no battery, right? So it was actually undetectable. It so was very cool. When, when the microphone was powered, it was getting the signals from the people that was talking, the sound, and then transmitting this back. And this is a transmission that was cut by some radio people working in there and say, hey, I'm listening to somebody in an embassy, and they were discovered, right? Yeah. And this type of technology was uh, from the 1950s, uh, roughly, but microphones were used since uh, First World War, right? So there is a lot of different technologies and evolution of these things, but we highlighted only the, the, the most important ones. Another, uh, another one that is very interesting is the very well-known KGB bag. It was interesting because it was really small, because it was developed after the transition transistor was invented. So it allowed them to reduce the size a lot. And you can see that there is um, a serial number that indicates the, the first two numbers indicates the year, so it's 1964, and it has two pins for power and one for antenna on the top. So it was very small and very versatile, and you could plant it everywhere. Um, another one that was very uh, modern, let's say, it was uh, the one from the bottom left, uh, or bottom left for you, uh, which is a, it's a Czech model uh, from Czech Republic. Uh, Czechoslovakia at the time, and it, it, it's very interesting because it's, it's modular, so it, it's composed by different cubes, and every cube has different functionalities, so you can actually build, let's say, your own microphone with different features according to your target or the situation and so on. Um, and the only thing that they, is not shown in the picture is that they actually need a lot of battery powers to actually power the device, so uh, it, it ended up being quite big, only because it requires a lot of battery for sustainability. And the last one we wanted to highlight is uh, it's called OPEC bag, which was found in Austria, uh, roughly in, the, I think, in 1970s. And in the picture, it might be a bit small, but it doesn't have any connector for power, for battery. So that was also, you know, giving power to a microphone is like crucial. So these people uh, actually make it work by placing the microphone near some uh, cables. So it will, the microphone will power itself by electrical induction. So you could leave it there, no battery required, you don't have to make a hole in the wall, anything, and it will work. So it was, it was uh, very, very clever. But from that moment to nowadays, things change a lot, right? So the thing is that now we are not using these microphones anymore. We have malware, right? So why we need microphones? Uh, if we have the malware, and we can install it in every phone. And the thing is that there are different problems, and they need different solutions. So yes, we can have very good malware. Finn Fisher here for the Citizen Lab. They are working in lasers pointing to mist in the air and getting the vibrations from the molecules in the air and using this as a microphone. So anything that is vibrating can be used as a microphone, right? We have hard disks vibrating. We have tables vibrating. Uh, the thing is that the problem that you try to solve, the people you try to listen, is in different situations. So, yes, we have this malware, but we still have people putting traditional microphones, right? The solution is different. So, yes, we, this is still uh, use. 
Yeah, and it, there is a lot of uh, different type of microphones nowadays, like GSM and other type of technologies. Uh, we focus specifically on FM microphones because we need to put some boundaries to our research. Otherwise, it will take us 10 years to do this. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, our scope of this research. So uh, that was our first stage of research, and then we wanted to actually find them and try them, right? So try all the mix. So we went to, we have a limited budget, but we went to Amazon, eBay, and so on, and we, we buy as many as possible. Uh, these are the top five that we, we choose to buy. The first three are typical FM microphones, like spine microphones. They are really small. Um, you can see them there. And the fourth one, the Bearer BY, that's actually a baby monitor. Uh, is something like this, which um, is you know for hearing babies cry at night. Uh, but <laughs> interestingly, it's uh, working on, on FM frequency, and it has a range of 800 meters because you know any parent would go outside and eight blocks away <laughs> and leave their baby alone. So um, that was very interesting. And the last one, the Mini A8, is a GSM one that we were trying to compare things with. So all of them uh, have like different battery um, uh, life. Li battery life. Thank you. Different battery life, but the first three of them, which are typical FM, uh, they have similar characteristics, similar range, similar battery life. And they, these three cost less than $30. So anyone can have them, right? It's, they are very accessible. Uh, I wanted to say that nobody's showing, n n not even in the movies, that the FM microphones, they need a large antenna because of the frequency, right? So, and if this antenna is not extended, you are not transmitting correctly, which means that when you put the microphone, you need to think where to put the antenna. You cannot just put it in a bottle or something like that, right? And you cannot coil it. So, so when the frequency is low, you need these uh, large antennas, and this is a limitation in your operation. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is something that is not commonly shown in movies and TV series. Like, right, you, they just go there and put some microphone and they leave. And then when we receive the microphones at home, we're like, okay, this, what do we do with this one meter long antenna? So this is our, uh, the technology that we were using for our investigation. Sorry, and the first one we cannot show you because when we were doing this talk before, we were giving the microphones to the audience and somebody keep it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, so don't do that, please. Micro, <laughs> micro spy like model is $10, lost. dollars, right? No. Or less. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so sorry, and also we didn't say yeah. something, I will go back, that most of them, the battery is something like this if you want to be mobile. So if you are plugging into the electricity, it's better, you don't need battery, but then you need to be close to electricity. And if not, you need a battery, and batteries usually are like this, or even, even the ones that are in here, they are quite big, so the battery and the antenna is not straightforward, right? Yeah, and it's n in the end, it's not that small anymore, right? You have the microphone that is super small, like the micro spy, but then you have like nine volt battery, which makes the size like uh, four times larger. So once we have this, we wanted to start experimenting. How does this work in real life, right? Outside f fantasy and fiction, how does this work? And we were doing experiments on the street, placing a microphone and then moving around and trying to hear different stuff. And we found that in the, all these movies, the, they have a van like, uh, in, in front of your home, right? Listening, and then you go outside to buy groceries and the van is there, right? And <laughs> this is actually not needed. Uh, we could hear perfectly from 300 meters away. So um, it was... It was a fascinating discovery because it was like, oh, this actually uh, more white than we think. Maybe there is actually people listening to us. And um, in here you can see like uh, one of the experiments. We did several of these. In this case, the mic bag location was static. It was not moving. And the receiver location was walking closer and farther away from the receiver. And you can see we were measuring the quality, um, like roughly, 
how good uh, our body was, uh, he we were hearing. Um, it was mostly, even 300 meters away, it was very, very good. Uh, you, sometimes you could not hear very well, but most of the time, mm. It was, it was and also, fine. we also found that the sensibility of the microphone are super high, so it means that you can put the microphone and hear anything that is happening 10 meters away, which is a lot in a house. Uh, and this is also giving you a bad quality if you are too close. So if you are too close to the microphone and you're speaking loudly, I in the receiver end, it's like super difficult, right? Um, yeah. And the last thing is that the batteries are usually less, the, l the battery life are less than the advertising, so you're expecting 10 hours or 12 hours, and you are getting eight or 10. Uh, only, only the GSM one, the small one I was given there, that one was, I think, day and half, and it was as advertised. Yeah, yeah in a standby. Uh, the GSM, of course, when, to, to listen to it, you have to call or the device will call you and when it's working, the battery, as any phone, it will drain, drain very quickly. But yeah, it was, it was fantastic to see that uh, the distance actually was very, very good. So... Um, yes, uh, so the problem is that, imagine, right? You have this problem that you want to solve and you need to listen to somebody, right? Put you in this position. So it's not easy, right? You need to put the microphone where the people will be in the moment that the people will speak wherever you want to listen. So the geolocation, it's not easy. You have to plan this accordingly. However, this means that attackers are close to you. This is good, this is filtering out your attackers. Not everyone can put a Microsoft, uh, Microsoft uh, microphone because they are building them now. Uh, no, no, they are not a microphone in your computer um, or, or in, your, in your house or, or build a working environment. Uh, it's bad for them, they need to be close, they need to physically go there. It's bad for you because they are your attackers and they are close, right? That's not a very good situation to be that the people is getting into your apartment. And however, the fact that this is physical thing means that nobody can help you from the internet. There is no pickup to send, there is no malware sample for everybody to analyze, nobody knows. They put the microphone, they took it out, that's it. So uh, uh, this is super bad for you. You don't have evidence, you don't have nothing. You have your suspicion, maybe a picture like IYY, and that's it, right? And this is, we think, the best way to stop spreading the analysis of what is possible, right? There are no recordings of anything that we can find in there. Yeah. So um, they have, uh, putting microphones is also very risky for them because they are close to you. You can detect them, you can raise suspicion about what is going on and so on. But it's. Uh, it's not usually in the internet when you are attacked by malware, you, all your adversaries, let's say, they are very far away. So you don't feel like a physical retaliation. In this case, it's kind of uh, scary. And uh, yeah, when, when you are being infected or trying to infect someone with malware, uh, it's not that straightforward, right? You will never know that if the malware infection work or it may not work st like right away. So it gets, it's not 100% successful uh, uh, all the time. And with microphones, you, you, you are planting them. So they are working and you can put them, get information and take them out. And as Sebastian said, there, there are no clues left, left behind. And yeah, malware leave traces. There are, you can take samples of the malware, you can take your phone and send them to analyze, right? Computer, whatever. And other people that, even if you don't have the expertise, other people can help you and find the, the, the attack. Yeah, and, and you can imagine that when you are planning the operation and you say, yo, malware is much easier and cheaper, the malware at some point will leak and then the people will know, right? So this thing of that the malware leave traces is super important if you want to be completely covered operation or not, right? Yeah, and we already say that when you are in the, in the case of malware, people from the internet can help you. And in the, these cases, they, they cannot. And one more remark regarding this is that, uh, for example, the GSM ones compared with the FM uh, microphone bugs, the GSM bugs are more dangerous for the attackers because they do leave traces, right? The GSM bugs need some uh, SIM card and the SIM card can be traced and uh, the calls and so on and so on. So, um, yeah. So this is important again, right? Like, if you want to use a GSM, which is awesome, you can call from any part of the world, 
be mindful of the risk, right? Hmm. So what, what is the comparison with non-commercial uh, microphones? These are microphones you can buy there. I'm pretty sure that there are better ones. And I'm pretty sure that the people that is doing this from governments, they have much, much, much more advanced technology, right? I know it. Uh, the thing is that you need to plan this, right? Like if you want some battery or electricity, where are you going to put it? Remember the Huawei picture? It was in the electricity plug because they need continual operation in there. However, close to these places, the transmission is not good. So you need a small antenna, which means higher frequency. So, so it's not straightforward. Uh, you want to transmit or you want to store it. So you can put a USB device and store everything so you are not transmitting, which means that you are not going to be detected easy, but which means that you have to go back to retrieve the storage. So, so there are pros and cons all over the place. One time conversation, you want to just hear something or you want to hear them all the time and where, in a car, school, work. Do you, want, do you have one time access to the facilities or you can get in whenever you want? If you can open the door anytime, hey, you can leave storage in there and retrieve it. If you only have one shot, or like in a plane, I don't know, then you need to do something completely different. Yeah, yeah. and don't, don't, uh, don't think that only cases like Ai Weiwei, that he was an activist and he, the government was looking after him, so uh, they planted uh, microphones in there because of his profile. Actually, that's not the most common case. The most common case is a husband or a wife trying to prove the other is cheating on them, so they put a microphone of $10, right? And that, that's why we have so many models in eBay and Amazon. So this is more common than we imagine. So before we go to the next stage, uh, remember that if you are really in a position where your life is at risk, do not uh, you always need to rely to a professional company that is doing this like professionally because you know it's your life so it's it's better to rely on them and the companies are doing this super good they are doing it uh, super thorough but it's taking time and it's amazingly expensive so this is why we think about thought about building a tool because if you need to pay thousands of dollars and wait eight hours at your house to find microphones, you cannot do this every time you have a meeting. You cannot do this in the houses of all your family. So this is why we say, no, no, we need to so do something more, right? Yeah. So we created in here, oh, thank you very much. So we created in here Salamandra. Salamandra is a software-defined radio base, free software detection tool, also doing location. You can go there, download it, use it, please do. Salamandra is using SDR. Uh, anybody here using SDR? Probably yes, hackers, there you go, yeah, SDR. Uh, so if you have an SDR device, uh, we are using a device, okay, now it's connected here, it's that one, it's like $11 on, on the internet. It's a s mm, digital TV receiver that the hacker community hacked a long time ago, and it's the default cheapest SDR USB device to use. What is the advantage of using this device for detecting microphones and not using a super good like HackRF car for detecting microphones? When you need to find Microsoft, imagine that you are in a dangerous situation. You are at risk. You are in a country that probably is trying to put Microsoft on you. So if you go to this country with a HackRF device, Microsoft searching, this is suspicious. It's like, oh, then you know. But if you go with this, this is for tuning TV. So nobody in the trip will tell you, oh yeah, what is this for, right? And then you can plug this, nobody knows, you can use it for TV actually, or you can use it for funding microphones, have your meeting and leave. And this is super important for a lot of journalists and activists that they want to be given away that they know that they may have a, a, a yeah. bag put if, in there. If right? the people that is even dropping on you, they know that you know, then you can be put at m even more danger, right? Yes. Uh, so they can move faster on you or something. Yeah. So we are not going to talk a lot about methodology here, but when you're searching Microsoft, consider this. If you really have a Microsoft microphone, <laughs> consider this, right? You don't want to give it away that you know what's going on. Uh, actually, some people, it's finding the microphone and it's putting some camera recording the place to see if somebody's coming back to take it, right? Which is maybe smart. So. 
what is the, the design of salamandra? Salamandra is based on the idea that when you transmit something, you generate this radio wave, electromagnetic frequency. This is a normal FM radio station in any country. And you can see one radio station, probably another far away radio station transmitting sound, analogic sound. This is the common situation. So we cannot just go there with salamandra and detect a peak in the transmission, because you have plenty of peaks all over around you. They are all over the place. So salamandra is actually playing with the fact that when you are closer to a microphone, there is noise because you are so close. The frequency is not unique. It's transmitting in this main frequency, but it's also there is a lot of spurious frequencies around, which is giving you these peaks that it's like, let's say, a small copy of the frequency, don't kill me. But, so what we are doing in Salamandra is that we are detecting these peaks, and then we are counting the amount of peaks that are around you to know how, mu how much noise is around the detection. So if you are having an FM radio station far away, this will not show in Salamandra. If you're having a microphone that is in the other room or two rooms around, this will not be caught by Salamandra because Salamandra needs proximity. You want to locate the hidden microphone, right? This is a trick in there. So what we did is that we actually, we are coming from research uh, education. So yes, we train these thresholds. So we run like 800 experiments with different thresholds of salamandra, the amount of peaks, the frequency we need, and we run, in in run this in different environments. And we found the best thresholds that are giving us the best detection. So uh, the, all the lines in here belong to salamandra, different configurations. And the red one that it's saying ghost is this hardware device, this is a micro, microphone detection device that is also cheap and you can buy and you can press a button and it's telling you if there are microphones around or not, right? And uh, right now, yeah, right now it's detecting something because of these microphones, right? So... Yeah, which is, which is tricky. So the thing hmm. is that uh, you can buy this, but there are a lot of disadvantages that when it's running out of battery, you don't know if you are not detecting or if you're running out of battery and a lot of things. Uh, but we were compared with these ones to know if Salamandra was doing good or not. And actually, in here you can see that there are some thresholds that are giving Salamandra the same precision detecting microphones that any other detection device there, which means that you can use it and it's good enough. Uh, however, with Salamandra, you will see that you can tune it, you can put more sensibility, less sensibility, you can record, and that is much better than any of these devices. Uh, these are the, the, the values of the experiments. You can then watch them if you like later. So this is an example of Salamandra. Salamandra is running in a small console and it's giving you like type of a histogram or graph that is showing you the amount of peaks that you have around in each frequency, which is giving you a sense of proximity. So the more noise, the closer you are, the more peaks, the, the larger or the longer the, that bar. The far away you are, less noise, and then the less bars you have in there. So let's see if I can show you something here. Yeah. Yeah, and this is extremely helpful because um, imagine that you are in a small house. This might, you might not waste your time in the wrong room searching for microsoft, right? If, even if the tool can point you in the correct room, uh, that will save a lot of time, reducing the finding from 12 hours to a couple of hours, right? Okay. And depending, of course, the, the place and the situation and the... Uh, and the amount of things. So in the, in the background is using RTL SDR, that it's a command line tool for gathering information from uh, software defense radio. There you go. And then you can see that there are some detections in the frequency 113, that is this microphone. Yeah, which and you I just disconnected and yeah. it's not doing anything. Yeah, not connected and it's not doing anything. So now the battery is super low, which means that if you go far away, you can not even listen to the microphone. But the idea is that you can see that a little bit more proximity is giving you more peaks, and when you are far away, you have less. And in Salamandra, you can also change the sensibility. So you can press S in there, and it's going to detect microphones that are more far away, 
or if there is too much noise, maybe, I don't know, in your house, you can put less sensibility and then you can walk around, right? And then you can see if you have microphones like two meters around you. Uh, also, something that it's, ad oh, sorry, advantage in Salamandra, it's that uh, it can not only detect the microphones, but all, all also locate them. And this is quite new. So far, the people that is doing this professionally is like sweeping your house with some metal detectors or something, or radio frequency detectors. So they are also moving around trying to see if they're there. In Salamandra or with Salamandra, you can have this idea of proximity. So you are running it and you are just moving around a little bit and you know if you are going in the right direction or not. It's like, okay, not this way. Oh, maybe this way. There you go. Oh, maybe that way, right? And then you can locate the microphones with the $10 device, which for us is a huge advantage. Consider that if you know you have a microphone and you don't know what it is, it's super bad, right? Yeah, and mostly because, for example, when you are traveling to a conference or some other event or whatever, uh, you want to maybe check your hotel room, right? Um, so you cannot, every time you travel and every time you go to a hotel, buy some services from a company to, to sw swap, sweep, your your place uh, because it's very costly and you will probably not do that and it's good for you to 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 be able to do that anytime you want for free because you have 10 15 dollars investment and that's it so and last remember that with salamandra you can now record the information from the sounds around you not the sounds but the signals and you can send these to another human being or robot in the internet, the, which means that you can record and send for another one to investigate, even if you don't know what to do. And it also means that you can record every day and then you can profile your house and see the differences, right? So the possibilities here are, are super yeah, large. Yeah, and with this ability of st storing, uh, recording and sending this to other people, we are breaking this, no one from the internet can help you because they are not there, right? Uh, so it increases the amount of help that you can receive. So we are running out of time, but real life experiments. Let's yeah. go there. So we wanted to, to try to real, like really experiment of uh, like in a play role thing, like I'm hiding microphones and you need to detect them. And so we developed like small methodology. So basically it's like the, the seeker, uh, in this case it was Sebastian. He goes out, I get in, uh, in a room, I just hide the mic. Uh, then he gets in and he starts speaking out loud some passwords or keywords that I should hear in order to measure how effective my hearing and receiving is, right? Handkerchief, for example. For example. <laughs> then, it's not um, my password. Then we measure the time it takes him to detect that there is something in the room and then we measure the time he takes him to locate the microphones in the room, which are two different important times. And then we measure the recall, which is the amount of pa passwords or keywords that I heard over the total passwords that he spoke to sor sort of measure the f effectiveness of this. And this was awesome. Like the first time we know that we are doing this. Oh, yeah, uh, you are listening to me, but can you listen correctly, right? Is it hard? Is it not hard? And basically, can you, h I will hide the microphone where, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, it's, it's actually really difficult. So in these experiments we're running here, you can see amount of microphone hidden, found, the time to detection and the time to find. You can see that the detection was pretty fast. I was getting into the room and Salamander was, Beep, okay, there is something here. That was seconds. But then finding, that's another thing, right? It was taking us 40 minutes, 25 minutes, and the rooms sometimes were small rooms. So it's like, I don't know, right? It's here and I have no idea what it is. And that was the key of the experiment, right? Yeah. Um, and the, and the hearing was not, it was in only one case was perfect, like uh, he spoke 10 passwords, I heard 10 passwords, but in the rest of the cases it was not very, very good. And we, it was for, for the listener, it was very hard because it was so, the microphones were so powerful that most of the time they was too loud and I, I, I couldn't hear properly because I was too close or it was it was very complicated. Uh, so the the accuracy of the listener is not like straightforward. Yeah. And remember that we are doing this the old style, which means listening. But now, of course, you can use computer for this, yeah. right? 
So, so yeah, these are the two locations that uh, it took the longest to find them. And this is actually under the table. You can see how the microphone is placed, but then all the cable need to be stitched around <laughs> to in order to 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 it to work. Um, actually, this to find this it took more than 15 minutes, right? And it was it was very fun to see <laughs> that it was right in front of. Your eyes, right? But it, it was very hard to find. Don't it. worry, they're checking under the table every day, right? They know. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one uh, location that was very interesting, and uh, I, I was very proud of me that I found it out, it was that we have this whiteboard, and it has like a cover on the top that it can be swapped in or out. And you, we had the microphone there, it was working perfectly, and it took more than half an hour to find it. So, this again this was right there right but it was very hard to notice so some of the conclusions we can do is that listen hiding is hard it's not easy to go say where, where should i put it right you should plan this in advance you should have time for this you cannot just run in a place and, and put it in a pot or something yeah like that. and it depends on your target who are you trying to spy on it's like a business conversation or do you, do, do you need to put it on the bedroom or the bathroom or where is this person speaking the important things, right? Yeah. Location is super hard. <coughs> there are plenty of places that you don't know and you are not using like uh, your mind in the right set of, oh yeah, I'm searching for microphones in there. So usually taking a long time to realize the places you can go. Yeah, and listening is also very hard, as we said before. It was not straightforward, and uh, of course, we we could use computers to improve the noise and so on. But mm. just putting a microphone and listening is not as easy as it sounds. And then, yeah. Yes, and detection is fast with Salamandra at least. Uh, the other the other detector that we have, the Ghost one, the hardware one, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, because it's also, remember, doing some noise. So if you are searching for microphones and you are having a noise saying beep, 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 this is giving away that you are searching for microphones. So this is another advantage of Salamandra, that you can detect super fast, and if you don't know one, anyone to know, hey, you, you can do it, right? Yeah, and one thing that we try, because in, you know, in all the movies is there, that they put, they put the radio and then they speak over it. So we, we try that, and we actually, is it was a very effective method, like 50, 60 years ago. It's not really effective anymore because with computer, it can take you half an hour or one hour for a non-expert to actually clean, remove the music, and hear perfectly the human voice. So don't be fooled that you can put the radio, uh, but it's not, it's not working that well. So those are the conclusions, right? Audio is dropping, it's a real threat. Don't be fooled. The fact that we don't know about them and this is not in the news so often doesn't mean it's not happening. Yes, it's costly. Yes, there are new methods. They have new ways of doing this, but this is still a thing in many countries. Yeah, and now you know how it works. Uh, you have the knowledge on how to protect yourself, how to detect the tool is there, open source. You can try it, download it. And so we encourage you to try Salamandra to try to find mix, maybe in old buildings, maybe there is someone left one behind. Um, and then uh, advance the field. Uh, there is a lot of microphones that we didn't cover and a lot of technologies that we didn't cover and we would be more than happy to hear that someone else was just moving the field uh, up. So um, help others. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for saying. <laughs>